A special thanks to these companies for being long-term partners of this channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding, DIY, builds, different gear. Today I'm here with Wes, who you may know as Black Hills Taco or now Black Hills Builds. We're here with this awesome 80 series Land Cruiser and he's gonna give us a walk around. So if you like walk arounds like this, you like DIY content or you like anything in between, uh, I typically cover it on the channel and you're probably gonna like the sort of content I produce. So consider subscribing down below and give this video a like if you enjoy it or it uh, brings you any sort of value. So with that being said, uh, Wes, you got any sort of words or should we just jump right into uh, checking this out? No, what's up guys? So, I'm glad we're doing this, but yeah, let's just do it. All right, sweet. So we're gonna start up front here and Wes just kind of talk us through the bumper you got here, some of the lights that are in the bumper, some future plans that maybe aren't on there right now. Yeah, absolutely. So I get a million questions about this bumper. C4 Fabrication, who I work for, manufactured these bumpers. There's only like three of them in existence right now. They're for the 80 series. In the future, we may manufacture more of them, but for right now, it is what it is. So I, guys are always asking me, can I snag one of those bumpers? Maybe down the road. Um, but yeah, it's really sleek, high and tight, similar to their other, other designs. So that's probably one of my favorite things I have on the 80 right now. Um, my favorite for sure. <laughs> lights in the bumper. I'm rocking Heretic. So I have their 30 inch amber and their quad pods in the fog pockets of the bumper, which fit really nice. Awesome. Um, we'll get into their other lights I have on the 80 later. Agency 6 Fairlead. I'm still waiting on my winch. Um, when I get that, I'll use their um, winch shackle too. So what kind of winch are you planning for? Um, I think these bumpers are so slim. You kind of go something slim line. That's usually, I prefer synthetic. So I'm probably going to go with the Smitty built. Um, they just released their gen three, like their 10 K synthetic winches. Okay. Awesome. So I'll probably toss one of those in there. Um, Very that's cool. basically it for the front end. Yeah. This is a wicked bumper. I absolutely love it. Yeah. It does so look really, really good. You've been talking to me about this, but you've got some new headlight plans. What what are you expecting? Yeah, so I ha I'm working with a company. I don't want to release too many details right now. You guys can see it on my Instagram if you want to check it out there, but I'm going to end up with some sweet retro main headlight housings, turns, markers. So I'm super stoked about that. I'm going to try to tie it into the, the amber theme with the rest of the build too. So hopefully I'll have those soon. All right, yeah, so now just uh, tell us a little about your wheel suspension, you know, the whole entire nine yards. Yeah, so I have a ton going on. Wheels and tires, I'm rocking Cooper STT Pros. Um, they're basically a mud train, I guess between like a hybrid train and a mud train in a 37 by 12 and a half. Wheels, I am running the Fuel Warp Beadlocks. So these are a true beadlock wheel, um, 17 by nine and I love them. Um, it's a pretty heavy combo, but they have been doing great so far and finally started to get them into the mud this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Um, suspension, I'm essentially rocking all Dobbinsons. They make a pretty, pretty legit kit for the 80 series. So they have their MRR adjustable three-way suspension, so low and high speed compression and then rebound, which is nice for something this big and top heavy because you can firm up your high speed compression for on-road manners and stuff. Right. Um, they have two spring rates for the 80 series. I'm rocking their VT series springs, which are a little heavier duty. Um, and then the nice thing about their kit is if you want to, which I did, you can get adjustable front and rear pan hards, adjustable rear links. So essentially all the arms on the 80 um, are, have adjustability and I dialed the, them in for the lift height of the suspension. I do have some front radius arms on the way from Delta. Um, they're just not here yet, but those will be an inch longer to shift the wheels forward on the 80 to help clear the 37th. Okay. And awesome. then I also just upgraded the steering components. So Marlin Crawler makes an upgraded steering kit that's got track bar tie rods, beefier tie rod ends, DOM tubing, um, just to kind of handle the extra mass I got going up here. Sweet. I did re-gear. So it's running 529s, which so far so good. That was really recent. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the that's entirety the of the suspension, I think. I don't nice. think I'm missing anything. What rock sliders are you running here? Yeah, so these were on the 80 when I bought them. Okay. Um, White Knuckle Off-Road makes these. And they're bolt-on, but they have a top plate and works for getting in and out pretty easily. And they're pretty pretty clean, good clearance. Yeah, so. they look good. I don't want to skip these. What do you have? Oh yeah. The so. Zach actually helped me out with some wiring on the 80. We were working on a big weekend project. One thing I hate doing is anything electrical. Um, these ditch light brackets from Yoda Tech, I believe, 
um, actually bolt on between the mirrors and the body of the 80. And then we have more Heretic quads in clear and we ran the wiring through the mirror, up and under the mirror, I guess, through it, down through the door panel and into the Switch Pros. We'll have to show you more of that. Yep. Um, he's the master behind all that stuff, but it looks super clean how they're mounted up. I'm excited to, we're gonna do a night run after this, test them out. So. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Hence the uh, sort of sunset background. We typically don't do walk arounds <laughs> with a sunset background, but we're gonna do this and I'll, I'll lay over plenty of B-roll in case you guys are hoping to see more details, so. All right, so uh, one thing that I actually really like because I'm a, a sleeping platform guy is these rear windows. So you wanna look, you know, just talk a little bit about the rear windows and then any sort of plans you have for the roof because I know you got some stuff coming. Yep, so all the 80 series come with factory third row seating. These windows can actually slide from either direction all the way over, which is really nice just to you know be accessible. The rear seats in mine are gone now. We did a platform, but that just allows you to slide them open from either direction and reach back in there and grab stuff. Yeah. Um, there was a factory roof rack that I got some hardware from McMaster's and deleted and then I will have a Rhino rack going on, um, one of their new Pioneer Series racks and then I have a super light from GFC in my garage right now just waiting to be bolted up. So trying to keep it as low as possible so I can still sneak into my 8 foot garage hopefully. <laughs> Um, and not be super top heavy it's since funny. I want to. It's funny you talking about like sneaking into an Sne eight foot I know, garage. right? That's a pretty <laughs> like, tall garage. Most people are like just trying to sneak into a seven foot garage. Yep. <laughs> but uh, it won't be top heavy that way. That The tent's only 80 pounds. So compared to right. a lot of the other ones on the market that you can get up to like 150, 160. Yeah. So I think it'll be a, a good match up there. Yeah, since you're so tall, you won't be as top heavy. Yep, exactly. Really nice. Rear bumper wise, so this bumper was also on the 80 series when I got it. It is made by 4x4 Labs. I believe they're based in California. They have a ton of options, which is nice, but single swing, or excuse me, dual swing, but on this single portion of the swing is the spare. There's nothing on this side yet. You can do dual jerrys or a ladder, I think they sell. There's tons of options. Okay. Um, but I was kind of nervous putting a 37 on here. I, I think this wheel and tire combo is like 115 pounds. Holy cow. It's pretty heavy, um, but it's been supporting it pretty good in the lockup with that one single latch is actually pretty solid. Nice. Um, getting into the rear. So, my boy Zach, <laughs> which I'm sure if you follow his page, did a whole platform in his back of his Forerunner. I loved it and I asked him if he could come up with something for my 80 series. And he did, and it's legit. Um, we can get into it. So what we did is the third row seat got deleted and Zach built a Huge drawer system that butts up against the second row. So it's as far deep as you can go. He built side wings on here um, that fold up. And then the drawer system's pretty intricate. So I can kind of go into that a little bit more detail. Or do you want to talk about it since you're the one that kind of designed it? I mean, I can, yeah, yeah. I can kind of Show talk what a little you did, bit man. about it. So when I was designing this with Wes, uh, we were kind of talking through basically everything he wanted. And on most SUVs, you lose a lot of space next to the wheel wells. So that is why I have those hinging doors. It's not anything groundbreaking. A lot of people do it on their platforms, but so we went with those. We've got decorative plates to block those container or those side spaces. So we've got on this side, just a blank plate. On this side, we actually wired a, a, basically a DC voltage panel in here. So he's got four USB ports and a 12 volt cigarette lighter port. So that's super handy. In addition to that electrical, we also have a 12 volt port wired to the rear of the platform specifically for the fridge. So that's really nice because then he doesn't have to have a cable sprawled out somewhere across the rear area. Also, I don't even think 80 series come with a rear cigarette lighter. So this was nice to add this functionality and all of it is wired to his second auxiliary battery since he's running a dual battery system. So it's super awesome. And we went with sort of a four drawer design. Um, We've got a lower drawer right here, which is specifically just for recovery gear, which basically won't kind of get in your way. We've got this right here, which looks like a drawer, but it's actually the slide for the fridge. And then we have this ginormous drawer over here, which in the top portion is a you know super deep drawer. I think it's almost 38 inches. It's very large. And this can be for camping gear, cooking gear, whatever. And then since Wes is one of the luckiest guys that, that owns an SUV and his actually has a tailgate on his SUV, sort of an L-spaced island, almost kitchen prep area. So he's got this whole extended surface here to work on. He's got his tailgate. 
There's power right there ready to go in case he wants to run something off his battery, like uh, you know some sort of electric cooking uh, appliance, and then he can easily access all the food right in this drawer. So uh, we kind of took quite a while to figure out how to lay this out, and I think it turned out really awesome. Um, up here, we also have this L track, which you may or may not be able to see. I'll throw some footage over, uh, but it's fully adjustable. So if he's got a small duffel bag, he can mount that in here with the L track. And if he's got a huge Pelican case, you can mount that as well. These anchor points slide all in the track. So it's super versatile and uh, helps you to keep everything, you know, anchored down and secure while driving on the trails. Yeah. All right. So I have a couple things we hard mounted in here for right now. Um, I just upgraded to a power tank recently. There is onboard air under the 80, which I didn't talk about. Um, mm. But the power tank is just a lot better for really, really big tires, airing up faster. So I think for a 37, I can go from like 15 PSI to 35 PSI in around 50 seconds. So, you know, five minutes for all four tires is pretty legit for 37s. Right. On the fridge slide, I actually just got this new Iceco fridge. Um, it is their new pro series in a 60 liter. Um, it's nice, you can actually access the fridge from either side. So it can open up this way, it can open up that way. You can take the lid completely off. Um, I'm pretty tall. The way this slide's designed, I can easily still access stuff that's inside of it, but having that functionality is nice. And then there's an eco mode on here and you can, you know, adjust when you want the fridge to turn off based on your auxiliary batteries voltage. So it's got some cool features. You can actually charge phones and stuff right on here, but we have the power in the back anyway. So either or both. <laughs> yeah, but it fits great on there. I'm excited to start using it. Also, the height of the platform was kind of designed around the height of this tailgate. So in a way, it's very easy to still reach in here. This whole back platform space you could use as like a working surface with the tailgate up too. So, you know, definitely uh, thought about a lot so that we could get this perfectly set up for Wes. So. Yeah, it's rad. We've got a Switch Pros mounted up back there and then we're using uh, part of a Blaze off-road mount here to mount up all of the terminals. So it turned out really nice, super clean, all super high quality harnessing. Uh, everything we did, we did with uh, you know, appropriate gauge wire and then put the tech wrapping on it, heat shrinked everything. So absolutely killer lighting setup. And then we just have a little bit of excess wire there that's wound up and um, we've been testing something. So that's why there's a wire there that's not connected and insulated off. But uh, yeah, we've just been getting this thing all completely dialed. It's a dual battery setup. So the starter battery is basically almost bare. Uh, this is going to be running the winch and just his starter and, and you know typical car things so and then we installed an isolator here um, read a lot of great reviews about this keyline outdoors or keyline chargers battery isolator so i found that on amazon and installed that um, the terminals on this battery are a little bit hectic, but still super clean. Uh, we decided to use the stock hardware from the battery isolator, uh, but this could easily be cleaned up with a little fuse box of some kind. Um, we just decided to not do that because we didn't have a nice clean mount for it. And so I just made sure to insulate everything appropriately and then zip all of the excess wiring out of the way. So everything is zip tied, organized, clean and uh, turned out really great. So the other thing we did is we ran a wire through the firewall down here and then along the plastic right through here, there's a little channel that I could fit a 10 gauge wire in uh, under here. So there's carpet and then right next to the carpet, there's a little bit of space for there's a wiring harness that exists there for the vehicle already and then I fit the wiring harness for the rear power in there as well. So it runs under that seat, runs under this, sorry it doesn't run under the seat, it runs under that plastic trim, runs under this plastic trim, and then I just guided this right along the seat line here and, and you can hardly even tell it's there, and then that's what runs power to that rear fridge port. 
So that's basically everything for the build. Uh, I hope you like sort of the armor and the suspension as well as a lot of the storage and even some of those interior and electrical mods that we went through. Um, but if you want to check out Wes's Instagram, he's much bigger than I am on Instagram <laughs> and he's got a pretty sweet account. So go check him out. I'll have his link down below. And uh, if you have any sort of questions about the build, I'm going to have a whole build list linked below. But if there's something that's not listed there or not explained well, feel free to comment below and uh, him or I will answer any of your questions. So Wes, thanks again yeah, for walking us around man. this. This is an intense 80 series. And probably the last thing to mention is this is almost a completely rust free 80 series. So Wes did an amazing job tracking this one down. And it's honestly one of the cleanest vehicles I've seen, let alone being from the 90s. Uh, I think the paint and the plastics look newer than on my Forerunner. So. Definitely, you got a sweet rig here, man. I appreciate and, uh, it, man. Thanks for showing us around. Absolutely. So. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. Well, with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.